According to legend, a king in nearby Edessa fell gravely ill and called for the Jewish healer. Jesus has already died, but a cloth bearing his image is delivered to the king. King Abgar is immediately healed, and the miraculous cloth becomes known as the Mandilion. The Mandilion is venerated throughout the Middle East as the image of Christ, and the city of Edessa becomes a center for Christianity. Mandilion is a word that means little towel. On this little towel was the face of Jesus, painted on a stylized background and usually shown framed. If the Mandilion was the shroud, why did it show only the face? It was then known only as a face cloth, but Ian Wilson, the English historian, says, ah, there's a key word in ancient documents, tetradiplon, which means doubled in four. If you double the shroud in four, you end up with a little rectangle with a face in the middle. Could the cloth of Edessa be the shroud folded to reveal only the face? The shroud is its own best map to the past. You start with one clue, and it leads to another. Call volunteers, please. In 1978, the Sturp team discovered a number of folds on the shroud. But of those, eight were prominent. And what we're going to do now is replicate that folding of the shroud. We're going to the uh, breaking light photographs proved, yes, there are eight folds in the shroud. Of course, photography can't tell us when they were made, but it does show that at least at one time in its existence, that shroud was folded in eight. So there would have been a rectangle with the face sitting in the middle of the rectangle. In the year 944, the Mandelian was moved to Constantinople, where it was periodically placed on public view. There, in 1203, a French knight from the Fourth Crusade reported seeing the image of Christ's body on a cloth. A year later, the Crusaders sacked the city and carried their spoils to Europe. Here, the record of the Mandelian abruptly ends, and the record of the Shroud begins. This is a cave just outside of Jerusalem, which is probably very similar to the type of cave where Jesus himself was buried. Uh, it would be closed with a large rock, a boulder most probably, and that's how the Christian Bible actually describes the burial of Jesus. When the Sturp team examined the underside of the shroud, they found that some pollen grains could not be identified because they were coated with a mineral. This mineral was subsequently analyzed and traced. And investigating the mineral, they discovered that it was a limestone of sorts, a limestone very, very rare and indigenous to an area outside of Jerusalem. The shroud is uh, covered with blood. So the question would be, why wasn't the body of Jesus um, properly washed the way in which traditional burial uh, requires in Jewish law. So the answer would be that when there's a tremendous amount of bleeding, one doesn't uh, uh, purify the body with water for fear that one would wash off all of that blood. That blood has to be buried with the body itself. We find that even in today's uh, uh, news accounts of uh, the terror attacks in Israel, let's say, for instance, when uh, in the aftermath of those events, you have rabbis and uh, righteous people going around literally sponging up the blood which, uh, of victims, which is on the ground, to be buried appropriately. According to the Christian Bible, there were two cloths found in the tomb, the shroud and another cloth. The second was believed to have covered the face of Jesus just after he was taken down from the cross. Simon Peter saw the cloth lying there on the ground and also the cloth that had been over his head. 
This was not with the linen cloth, but rolled up in a place by itself. This cloth, called the Sudarium, is found today in Oviedo in northern Spain. Jorge Rodriguez is a member of Spain's Shroud Study Center, and Mark Goosen has written a recent book about the Sudarium and its relationship to the Shroud. The Sudarium is covered with blood, but there is no image as there is on the Shroud. It is believed that this cloth was removed from the face before the body was wrapped in the Shroud. The cloth is running away from danger. It was always just ahead of the invaders, just escaping, always going further north to, uh, to the safer places. And this is where it stayed. This was the safest place in Spain during the, the Moorish invasion. It began its journey out of Jerusalem in the year 614 to escape an advancing Persian army. First taken to Alexandria, it was repeatedly moved westward along the African coast until it reached Toledo in Christian Spain. When the Moorish invasion of Spain began in 711, the Sudarium was rushed further north into the mountains and hidden in a cave. Using a replica, Researchers show how the cloth was wrapped across the face. They believe it was pressed to the face, absorbing blood and other fluids, consistent with the Jewish custom respectfully covering the face of a victim of violence, and then preserving the covering to keep the blood with the body. And these stains here are particularly interesting because they coincide exactly with, this, with the stains on the, on the back of the shroud, on the dorsal image of the blood again that was caught in the hair from the, from the wounds from the crown of thorns. They're exactly the same here. Recent home video analysis by Dr. Alan Wanger reveals remarkable similarities between the sudarium and the shroud. Uh, shroud face uh, uh, superimposed on that of the sudarium. Uh, blood stains, that's the most marked one, and the one of the easier to reference is this blood stain right here. Dropping down to the area on the nose, as we see uh, congruence down here. And as we shift into hair here, we can see again uh, congruences of these blood stains. The blood type on the cloth of Oviedo has been found to be type AB. This is the same blood type found on the shroud. We know for a fact that the Sudarium has been in Spain since the 7th century. This in itself undercuts the Shroud's carbon dating by at least 600 years. The Book of Testaments, which is here in the cathedral, uh, takes the Sudarium even further back, and we believe that it takes it all the way back to the 1st century, that it was one of the burial cloths of Christ, or used just before the burial. <laughs> 